Hello. Today we're going to have a look at programming the flight management computer in the MD82 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this is the Leonardo MD82, the mad dog as they call it. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll basically go through the basic route planning, programming SIDs and STARS, looking at discontinuities, adding extra waypoints into a route, removing waypoints. Uh, we'll also create some custom waypoints in a route. We'll make some abeam waypoints in a route. We'll show you how to do direct to. And we'll also look at how to configure the, the flap settings in the aircraft so you don't get warnings when you're rolling down the runway. And if you've been playing with the MD-82, you've probably be, been pulling your hair out with the flap warnings on the takeoff roll. And I'll show you how to configure it so you don't get them. Okay, so I'm going to use keyboard combinations to move around. If I press Control and 2, we're going to go straight down to the flight management computer. If we press F, we're going to come back to the pilot's eye view. And if I press Alt and 1, we're going to get the tablet. Now, Alt and 1 is a custom configuration. If you're ever looking around the cockpit, you can configure your view to look at something. If you press Control, Alt and a number, that will set a custom view. And then if you just press Alt with that number, you get the custom view. Okay, so Control and Alt and a number sets a custom view, and then Alt with the number takes you to that custom view. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go and program a basic route. But before we do that, let's go and have a look on Little Nav Map and see what's going on in terms of the weather today and our route. So we're gonna we're gonna use Little Nav Map to sketch out a route. So we have a route to work from, and then we'll go and program that into the flight management computer. So we are at Stansted Airport, just north of London. So to make that the beginning of our route, we right click on Stansted, and we can set that as our departure airfield. Okay, so that puts it into the flight plan over here. So then we can open the search box, and we can go to airports, and we can type in, well you can see it's already keyed in, but you can Put in the IDENT or the ICAO code for your airport that you want to fly to. So EGPH would be Edinburgh, for example. And we can then right click on it and set that as our destination. So we now have Stansted to Edinburgh. And you can see that on the map is illustrated for us. So the next thing to work out is how are we going to leave Stansted? So we can go and right click on Stansted over on the flight plan menu over here or the the list of waypoints that are building up and we can show the departure procedures for Stansted. We can do the same trick actually by right clicking on Stansted itself and show the departure procedures. Okay so that shows us we've got standard instrument departures for runway 4 and runway 22 and given the wind we will be taking off runway 4 to take off into the wind. Okay so if we go and have a look at what they look like we can superimpose them onto the map and so we're going to go for BKY2S as our standard instrument departure taking off from runway 04. So we can then right click on that SID and insert it into our flight plan and it becomes part of the flight plan. At the other end of the route we're going to look at Edinburgh. So we've du double clicked on Edinburgh there on the, the flight plan window and we can do the same trick. We can right click and it will say show arrival procedures. So we do that, and over here on the search, it shows us some stars and some approaches. So given the wind, we will be taking or landing on runway 06. So ILS for runway 06, and we insert that by right-clicking on it into our flight plan. So And then we can pick a standard approach route as well. So if we have a look, there's the AG P1E. There's a few others for coming in from different directions. We'll just go for AG P1E. So if we right click and insert it, and that puts that into our flight plan as well. So we've now got a fully detailed flight plan with the SID and a star and an approach. So we'll just put something mid route as well, just so we've got something to do with manipulating a flight plan. So you can see there's a VOR station over here called TNT or Trent. If we right click on that, we can add that to our flight plan. So we add the VOR DME at Trent into our flight plan. Okay, so we've got the SID, a waypoint, a star, and an approach. So let's go and jump over to the airplane and see how we do that. So we press Control 2, and that takes us straight to the 
the FMC. The first thing we need to do in the FMC is go and initialize our position. So we click on the soft key next to pause in it. And we need to put in a reference airport. So obviously this is wrong at the moment. So we are at Stansted and the ICAO code is EGSS. So we key those into the scratch pad at the bottom. And then we press the soft key next to that reference airport. So that tells the aircraft where we are in the world. But then we can initialize the um, guidance system with exactly where we are. So we can pick up the value from the GPS. And where this is actually getting it from, it's a bit of a shortcut. If we go next page, you can see we're on page one of three. There are two GPS systems. So on page three, it shows you both of their coordinates. So it's actually showing you the first one in that page, in that first page of POS in it as a shortcut. So you can see that GNS number one is got that value. So we can click on that and that copies that value into the scratch pad. And then we can click on the soft key next to set FMC position and it's set the position, it disappears. Okay, so now we can carry on to set up our route. So we are starting off at EGSS or Stansted and we're going to Edinburgh, which is EGPH. EGPH. And if we click the soft key next to the destination, it programs that in. We can also say what runway we are leaving Stansted on. So if we just remind ourselves, go and have a look at little nav map, we were going to leave on runway 04. So we can put in 04 on the runway. It understands what we mean by that. We're not going to worry about the VIA and 2 programming today. If, if you are using Airways, then you might use this, but we're, not, we're just going to put basic waypoints in. Okay, so... The next thing we're going to do is go and select the departure and arrival airfield information. So if we click on the DEP R button, we can go to it. Notice it lists here the two parts of our journey that it knows about so far. So Stansted and Edinburgh. And you can set departure from Stansted over here. So click on the DEP button. So we've got runway 04 already selected because we selected it earlier. We now need to choose the standard instrument departure we're using. So if you remember from looking at our plan, we're using the BKY-2S standard instrument departure, which basically details this succession of waypoints to fly through when we take off. So we'll select that. So we've got both selected now. And then we can go on route, activate that route and execute it. If we go and look in the legs page now, you will see that the various elements of this departure route are now programmed in as legs and by the same token if we go press F to look in the aircraft we go and remove the yoke just by clicking on the base of it and we go and move this to make sure it's in plan or map mode even sorry if we were to zoom in on this using this oh, I've just selected a different mode by accident This is very difficult to see where this is pro what mode this is in. Here we go. If we change the zoom, yeah, you can't quite see it at the moment. If we go to plan mode, you can see it. So if we zoom in, you can see that standard instrument departure is programmed in, and that will broadly reflect what we're seeing here. Notice also we can click the step button. As long as we're looking at the legs page, a step option appears and it shows which waypoint on this screen is centered. So we can click step and we can double check what we've programmed looks correct. So that all looks fine. So then we'll press control two again, which will center us up over here. We haven't set up our approach into Edinburgh yet. So we'll go and click the DEP R button. And we can go back to the index, because remember, we were still on the departure page when we last saw this. So we go back to index. And we've got Edinburgh here, and we want to do the arrival into Edinburgh. So we're going to land on runway 06. And we're going to use the AGP E1E standard approach route into Edinburgh. So then we can execute that. Notice there are some transitions. What that really means is we want you sometimes get options on a, an, on a standard approach route of which waypoint they're going to pass through along the way. So we are not going to bother with that. We're just going to go with whatever it gives us. So execute. So it, it would be de detailed on your flight plan if you did have a specific transition. 
So what a, a transition really means is in terms of an airway. So if you're in a high altitude corridor and you're wanting to come in for, you know, from a specific corridor into the standard approach route, then you would use the transition to do it. OK. So we've chosen the um, the approach and the standard and the standard approach route to the airport. If we go and look in legs now, we can go next page, next page and previous page to step through what we've programmed so far. So this represents the end of the SID or standard instrument departure, and then there's the rest of the route. And notice the FMC has inserted a, a discontinuity. So what this means is basically. If we look at our flight plan, this whole region from the end of the SID all the way up to the star, it's not going to guess what we mean. So we remember we said, oh, let's put a waypoint halfway. So we'll put a waypoint in here at this between the SID and the star. So we, we were going to choose TNT, which is the Trent VOR. So if we select the discontinuity, there are many TNTs in the world, and it's listing several of them. So we can double check this by right clicking on the Trent VOR, pull up the information in the little nav map, and it's the one at 53 degrees. And it's this one. Yep, 53. So if we go and click on Trent, and now if we go back down, it still hasn't got rid of the discontinuity. Because inserting a waypoint into a discontinuity just pushes the discontinuity further down or should I say it pushes the flight plan down from the point you have selected so to get rid of a discontinuity you actually select the waypoint below and then select the discontinuity and that works for anything actually you can if I wanted Haven to go over the top of Agped I could just select Haven and then Agped and it would pull Haven up but in this case we're going to select Agped and pull Agped up to the discontinuity which closes that gap notice we haven't actually made the change yet this is a modification to the route so we can either erase our modification or we can execute our modification and this will change so if we say execute this is now the active route okay so you can now see if we go back press F and look back at this we've now got that Trent VOR on our route so if we go and zoom out we can see that so we use the knob over here to change the zoom level. So roll it clockwise. Yeah, so you can see there's the end of the star. We fly along to Trent and then we go north, which is broadly the same as this. Yeah, end of the star and then north. OK, at that point, we have basically done the flight plan. But it's not the end in terms of the FMC. So we're going to go and quickly look at the performance calculations now in the flight plan so if we press control 2 again to center this up this is where it gets kind of interesting so we go back to our route page and we got the performance initialization so it's asking us about the aircraft now so what cruise altitude are we going to fly at so we'll say for argument's sake we're going to go for 24,000 feet today okay so we can we can either type in 24,000 or we can type in 240, which would be a flight level. So flight levels are in hundreds of feet. So if we clear that back away and just type 240 and select the soft key next to cruise altitude, it knows what we mean, so it means a flight level. So 240 times 100 is 24,000. Fuel, fuel and schedule. So I'm not going to get into what the schedule means. We're just N is normal. So we're going to select the amount of fuel that's in the aircraft. Obviously, if you're programming this up for a proper flight, you would know how much fuel you've put in to, to match the route for the aircraft type. But we've got an amount here, which we'll just use for now. So it's just ticked down a bit. The engines are busy running at the back of the aircraft. That's why we can see this happening. So we need to put it in in tons. So this is all in kilograms in the MD-82. So we need to put in 6.7. OK, so we press Control 2 again so we can see this. And we put in 6.7 on the fuel. And notice it says burn schedule required, A or N. Yeah, because we didn't put that schedule on. So we need to put 6.7 slash N. So we'll clear that message away and we'll try again. 
6.7 slash n and we put that in and it's happy with that it now wants to know the gross weight of the aircraft and again you can find that out over here so we want 57.7 it knows the zero fuel weight already it's figured it out by taking one of those away from the other it now wants to know how much reserve fuel you want to have so we'll put in one ton okay Another way of finding these numbers out, rather, rather than just reading them off the screens over here, is if we press Alt and 1 to go back to the tablet, we've got the Weight and Balance application on the tablet. So if we go to that application, notice you have the zero fuel weight, the takeoff fuel weight, or gross fuel weight, yeah? So you, can, you could fill those in from here as well. So you've got takeoff weight 57.7. These are the center of gravities, by the way, 10.2 and 13.3. So this is the center of gravity at zero weight and the center of gravity at takeoff weight. Okay, so let's go back to the computer. So we filled in the basic, uh, the weights. Now we can go to the takeoff section. And it would like some V speed. So these are the numbers that the the minimum stopping speed, you know, or the, the V1 is the, the speed at which you can still stop. VR is your rotate speed. V2 is your, you know, go for flight speed. Um, we get, we have to use a calculator to figure them out, and I'll show you how to do that now. So if we go Alt and one again, we're back at the tablet. We go back to the main page. Now remember, we know where we're taking off from now, so we can go into the performance calculator. And we can program into this everything we know about the departure airfield. So we go for the airport. We are taking off from EGSS, which is Stansted. So it's keyed it straight in and we press enter. We are taking off from runway 04. If we click this, it will cycle through the runways. It is dry. We'll say flaps. We just want the optimum. And then it will tell us in a moment what to set the flaps to. And that becomes important in a moment. We need to set the wind on the ground. So let's go and have a look at Stansted if we show information we can get the meter from Stansted so if we just go to the overview page in this one map you can see here it is look zero three zero degrees zero eight knots is the wind so we want to go and key the wind in at zero three zero degrees slash zero eight knots enter so it's saying headwind seven knots crosswind one knot yeah, it's figured out the vectors. QNH, we need to figure out the QNH on the ground. And here we go, the QNH is 1024 for Stansted. So this is the barometric pressure, 1024. So this is how thick the air is, basically. So it needs to figure that out. So what was our takeoff weight? If we go back and look in here, takeoff weight, gross weight, 57.7 tonnes. So we need to put that in in kilograms, though. So 57,700. Enter. Outside air temperature, again, you can get that from the weather readout. I know it's already 15 degrees, so we can leave that as 15 degrees centigrade. And then we can click Calculate. Give it a few moments. And there we go. It wants the flaps at 6 degrees. It wants the V-speeds 136, 141 and 150. So if we press control and two again, 136, 141 and 150. 136, 141 and was it 150? 150. So then as we accelerate along the runway, these will be the speeds called out by the co-pilot to tell us, you know, when we can rotate, for example. Notice it also told us six degrees about the flaps. That becomes important because we've, we've basically done the takeoff calculations now. If we go back to the normal view here, notice in the MD-82 there's this flap setting. This will have changed automatically when we calculated those speeds. Unfortunately, there's a problem with Flight Simulator. In the real aircraft, the pilots can actually smoothly move this flap setting between the um, the settings for the flaps. In the simulator, you can't. 
if I go and try and move my flap lever, I can't move it smoothly, so I can't get 6 degrees. So what I have to do is select 11, for example, and I have to come over here, and I have to change the flap setting to 11. So I'm just rolling the mouse on the flap setting to take it to 11 degrees. The CG will be correct, so it will have calculated 13.3, I think, on the centre of gravity, and that's already there. But you just have to be mindful of changing that flap setting. OK? And by the same token, you can move the, the trim of the aircraft to line it up. It's a bit tricky to do, actually, from this view. Let's do it here. So you can... It's not going to let me do it easily, is it? It's only going one way. Oh, there we go. You can use the mouse wheel to do it. So I'm just lining the levers up. And you can hear the trim clacks on happening as I do that. So as long as you line those up, then the aircraft is trimmed for takeoff. Okay, so that means it will be in equilibrium as you accelerate along the runway. It won't suddenly lift the nose halfway along the runway as long as these are lined up. Okay, so yes, if you don't set this flap setting to actually match the flap lever, you will get a warning as you are rolling along the runway, and that warning will go away as soon as the weight comes off the wheels. It's just something to be aware of. Okay, so we've basically done everything we needed to do. If we go and look in the legs page, there's a few other things I want to show you. So we saw how you can remove discontinuities. We could just pull an item on the flight plan up over the top of the discontinuity. What if we wanted to put an extra waypoint in along the way? So if we go back to our... We're on the legs page, yes. We go next page, and we can see Trent is in there. So how do we get rid of Trent? We could select Agped, and then select Trent, and it will pull everything up. Okay? So we've got rid of Trent now. And, and again, we've only modified it, we haven't done it. If we click Execute, that becomes the active route again. So if we wanted to put Trent back in, we just go TNT, and we select the waypoint we want it to go in front of. So in our situation here, it's Agped. And again, there's more than one Trent, we pick the correct one. And if we go next page, there's Trent is back in, and it's made a discontinuity. So notice, so we haven't made the change yet, but we can carry on making changes until we do execute them. So we could pull Agped back out, or put back up over the top of the discontinuity and execute it. Okay, so that's inserting and removing waypoints. It's fairly straightforward how to do that. What if we wanted a custom waypoint? So if we have a look at our map, what if after Trent we wanted... We're going to put a distance measurement on using the tunnel map here from the VOR. Say if it was at 320 degrees, and we'll go a little bit closer, 10 miles. Three, three, I'm just trying to get this so it's nice, neat numbers. So this is a, we want a waypoint at 320 degrees from Trent, at 10 miles away. So what you can do is key in not just the waypoint, but also the bearing and the distance. So we can say TNT and 320 for the angle, and then a slash, and then the distance. So 10 nautical miles. And we'll do that after TNT. So if we put it in there, and it's done it. OK? And then we can pull AGPED back over the top of that discontinuity. Whenever you insert, it always makes a discontinuity. So we've cleaned that back up. So if we go and have a look before we execute that, we can see what it's the dotted line on the map illustrates what it's what is being modified. And if we then execute that, that will become the solid line. So if we do that, see if that happened? The dotted line became the solid line, the, the original solid line has gone. So we've now got an extra waypoint just off of the end of TNT. So you can do that with any waypoint in the navigation database. You can make a custom waypoint at a bearing and a distance from it. Okay? So let's go and delete that one back out, because I was really just showing you that as an example. So we're going to pull AGPED back over the top of TNT, and we execute it. 
so it's now gone again yeah we're just going through TNT and then on our way another option you have so we'll just remove this off of our flight plan remove the distance measurement what if we were flying along here and we came past this waypoint tip hill and we actually wanted to turn when we get or you know do something when we get alongside where tip hill is but we don't want to fly to it we want to you know mark where this is on our flight plan alongside tip hill it's called an abeam waypoint so what you can do is go to control and two so we're looking at the fmc again we're going to go to the fixes page and we're going to type into here tip hill t i p i l and we select it as a fix okay and if you go and look carefully if we before we do anything else you can see it's highlighted tipple on this display so if we zoom in slightly you can see tipple is alongside our route which you know is what you can see here there's tipple there's tnt and we're flying past it so watch what happens when we do we've got tipple as the fix and we say we want a beam and it's done this calculation if we then select that again, it's worth pointing out before we do anything else, let's go and have a look at what this has drawn. You can see a dotted line from Tipil to the closest point on our route, our closest approach to it. That is the abeam waypoint it has given us. Yeah? So in the same way we saw the name of a waypoint and a bearing and a distance, that happens to be the position of that intercept point. So, and it's put it in the scratch padlet when we, when we clicked on the calculation. So we can go back to the legs page, remembering that the scratch pad stays there. We can go to the next page. So there was Trent. So after Trent, we want to go through this, this point. So we've inserted what was in the scratch pad into here. It's renamed it as tip 04. We can pull Agped over the discontinuity and execute that. And let's have a look at what this looks like on our flight plan now. So we've now got a green dotted line from the fix over to a marker on our flight plan. So by doing this, you can actually fly a straight line past waypoints, but still have them marked on your plan. And you could use it for turning points or just for navigation, you know, for timing points. So they are called a beam waypoints. OK. So let's go and look into the flight plan. What if we wanted to get rid of the SID and just fly straight to TNT? To do a essentially a direct to. If I select TNT, so it goes in here, then we go previous page. So this was the beginning of our flight plan. I'm just going to pull TNT all the way up to the top. We have now wiped out the beginning of the flight plan. Yeah, so that's how you do a direct to. You select where you want to fly to and you pull it up. If you're already flying to somewhere else, there's nothing to stop you inserting where you want to fly directly to as the next leg and then pull it up. Yeah, and then the aircraft, obviously, if you're in nav mode, it will fly d straight to it. OK, I think we've pretty much done everything we needed to do. The one thing we also need to remember about using the aircraft is the brake plunger. It doesn't seem to be mapped with the parking brake, so you need to make your controller also correspond with pushing or pulling the parking brake plunger. Yeah, so pull it to engage it. So if I push it down, that means the parking brakes are back off. If I pull it, they're back on. You just need to be aware of that with this aircraft. But I, get, I think the main takeaways today were manipulating the route using custom waypoints and the flap setting. So you need to change that flap setting to match what the flap lever can do. Because the reason for doing that is in the real aircraft, the pilot can actually smoothly move that lever. And, you know, get flap settings that are not on the, the detents, as we might call them. OK, so there you go. That's the, the FMC for the MD-82, the flight management computer, and how to manipulate routes with it. So hopefully that's been interesting for you. You'll have noticed we didn't cover a couple of things that you can do in a 737, for example. You can't do range rings. Yeah, so you can't make a fix and turn it into a range ring. 
in this FMC, you also can't do offset routes. So in the 737, you can tell the aircraft to fly like five miles to the left or the right of your route, for example. You can't do that in the MD-82. Okay, I think that's probably enough for today. So hopefully you learnt something along the way about programming the FMC and where to get the performance data from. Obviously, we only looked at the takeoff calculator there. There's also a landing calculator. So you can put in all of the data about your destination airfield and that will give you your, you know, your performance information which again you can program into the the next stage of your route when you're looking at the performance data okay i'm going to leave it there and i'll hopefully i'll see you soon in the sim take care i'll talk to you soon